Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Hippie Hacker. And I'm a hippie because I focus on community stuff at a neighborhood and a nation level. And I'm a hacker because I do it with technology. I've been doing uh, open source stuff for about 30 some odd years. And um, these are my two boys in the Volkswagen bus I had later in life. Earlier it was Wally, the Westphalia. And uh, she had uh, tiki torches on the front and a hula hoop on the back. And I went all around the different communities and they helped me keep my bus on the road. Um, but today I'm here to talk about us cultivating a culture of cooperation. And cooperation requires us being on the same page while we learn to uh, co-author and create together. So that's gonna be kind of the focus of today's, today's talk. Um, everything I do today will be in a web browser because I'm being a little bit direct when I say we're all gonna be on the same web page. So I have created a place for the interfacing I.O. for sharing, and it's sharing.io, and oh, it's down. What am I gonna do? This is horrible for trying to present to an audience. Um, so let's try this. Uh, I know a back door because being a hacker and all that. Um, so I have this thing called Emacs. So I actually learned uh, Lisp programming from a guy called uh, Richard. Um, and, and this was back in the day, like 2000, uh, 2000. I was in this Linux lunacy, it was a cruise, it was kind of fun. We got to see Richard and then a friend, um, ESR, was talking about open source software. And you can imagine how fascinating and fun that was if you know that conversation. Uh, in addition to Emacs, I used to log into our computers at the university, and the university computers, they, they ran um, Solaris, but it had a user space full of utilities like Screen, and we could share our you know, terminals with each other. And they have a new thing called Terminal Mux, or Terminal Muxer. So I have brought up a Terminal Muxer thing uh, that allow us to kind of poke around to demonstrate how we can be on the same page together. Now, I would invite you, if you are interested, to co-author with me today to put into your web browser tmux.sharing.io. Um, if you're on a phone, you can please rotate it to the, you know, looks sideways. <laughs> Um, but what I'm going to do is we're going to demonstrate by going through these different headings in our demo, and it will drive the TMUX session on the right so we can learn to share the way in which we work together uh, with others. So we have this first one. It installs some software from a place called Coder. Is that big enough for everybody? Make it a bit bigger. We can change the size as needed. Um, but you can also see over here that it ran Coder and then, and then simulated to, to, to calling it space, because I'm less about focusing on one group of people uh, and focus on everybody on the planet. So I, I have this mantra or prayer that never leaves my head. And everything I do, I do it for everybody, not for one organization, uh, one nation, or one even neighborhood. Um, so we're going to now do um, space login or coder login, which will ask us to log in via the CLI. So I'm actually, these are all web pages, by the way. So the left one is Emacs and the right one is a terminal muxer. If I click on this one, it takes me into space.sharing.io. So if you want to try this on your computer at home, this is how we create shared space. And it does this via pods. And it does this via anything you can terraform, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and log in uh, to GitHub. It will ask you a question the first time you do it. And it will say, do you mind sharing your email and your public information? It just allows us to limit access at some point to specific CNCF projects. Um, because what we're trying to do is make it easy for CNCF projects to onboard and demonstrate their value and to help people get to a point of co-authoring together. Um, so I'm going to copy this link after I've logged in. And I'm going to, um, oops, I forgot to log in. <laughs> so we'll finish login and I'll paste my token. And it says, welcome, HH, you're authenticated. That's lovely. I, I feel authenticated. It's like when you go to pay for something with a little you know, card, it says, you are validated. Uh, so it's nice to be. Um, 
seen and validated. So now we'll go through and see what kind of templates we have via the CLI. We have two templates available to us for creating shared spaces right now, but I'm hoping that we'll be able to gather many more templates because the ways of developing are kind of like, if you have the, back in my day, we were the VI versus Emacs. Now you've got like the code, VS code and all these other places, but onboarding someone new into the way in which your particular group of humans develops is, is kind of hard. But wouldn't it be nice if we could just click to create and give them the default preferences for this particular project? A lot of projects will have files that say, here is the way in which the code must be submitted for PRs, but we often don't recommend an initial way to quickly get started to contribute. And I think it would be great if we could find a way to start gathering templates of ways to make space for everyone to be involved in open source. So the next step I'm going to do is create a new pod. It's called iiPod. Because an iPod is just for one person, but an iiPod is for all the eyes in this room. And I would suggest that when you do create space, don't do it by yourself. When I first went to New Zealand, there was a big mural on the wall at the airport, and it said, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. But if you want to go far, do it together. And in the open source community, we often say that we're not going to spend time with you until you demonstrate this much value. They have to go through and learn and dig deep, and, but they, 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 there's never this sense of community and connection early on. And wouldn't it be lovely if when they, there's an ad that says, when you, if you want to learn, they just click here to, to, to contribute, and it spins up an environment to hopefully increase the number of etcd contributors, because you know, there's, there's not a lot of them, and we, and we need them. Uh, or or um, trying to tackle some of these documentation issues where you bring up the working documentation all inside the browser, and it says, here's a list of good issues but they don't have to have any software to get started. It's all, all browser-based and it's all can be customized. So in this particular instance, I've made a custom image uh, for my container called iiPod kubeday TLD. And so I'm gonna say, yes, that sounds great. I'm gonna check out a Git repository at sharing.io slash sharing.io. And sharing.io is where I have placed the code for the website that is now down. We're gonna, no problem, we're gonna bring this up today together. And then because I've come from a world where you have Emacs and these other tools, there's just different types of ways of, of, uh, of telling stories. Uh, you can have a, a text file, or you can have a store a book, or you can have, but I, I, there's a type of um, literature called, uh, what was the name? It's, um, I call it executable literature, but there's also some other, other names for it. Literate programming is probably the, the most accepted uh, version of that. And it's where you write the the, the, the story of how the code is supposed to run and includes snippets of code and when you tangle it all together, um, the, the code is, is written. And so some of this is about how do we tie together the humans who would like to uh, use the code to something meaningful. So I'm going to share an org file that is our demo. And if you notice, the name of that file is the file on the left. That is demo.org because this is kind of a reentrant thing to kind of show you how to do this yourself. So this talk is both um, some, some a demo and, uh, and an invitation for you to do this too. So when you get to the point that you have done this, reach out to me on Twitter or, or the CNCF or the Kubernetes Slack or any of those places. I'm, I'm hippie hacker, HH, I'm super easy to find. Um, so I'm gonna create a new workspace. I don't like to call it work, I just like to call it spaces because maybe we do things in community that aren't, aren't work. So I'm gonna confirm to create the Kube Day Tel Aviv II pod, and it's on its way up now. Um, inside of this will be our, um, our deployment, and if we go over to, what was the website? Oh, again, it's sharing.io. So on sharing.io, and I think I forgot my, my clicky clicky, um, if anybody wants to bring up on their own computer or phone the sharing.io slides, I um, have a trick that I can show you. I can pull out my phone. My, here we go. I got this thing, so I can. You know, the, the laptops these days they don't have any USB ports that are. Um, pardon me. Got to plug this in earlier. So, um, I, I used to be called Instant Infrastructure, and so this is the um, 
trying to create instant infrastructure for innovation. I'm, I'm hippie. And I have the, in, in the org file we'll see later, there's actually a slide that has some uh, uh, chat GPT code. And when you execute, it actually finds the red ball and, and brings that up. Um, and this is a presentation I gave it. This is less about this particular set of slides. Um, but I will tell you a fun story about Hippie's free software from, ah, this would have been 1994 or five. Um, I was uh, at university. And I wanted to be able to make some money with, uh, with free software or open source. And I downloaded the CD-ROMs, and I put them on the ISOs, and I put them in a backpack. And I went to, it was called First Saturday in Dallas. And it's basically where the community of, of uh, ham radio operators kind of turned into a group of, of people that got computers and sold them. So there's a lot of hackers and a lot of folks. So you're walking around with this backpack, and I'm saying, free software, five bucks. And it was kind of fun because 30 years ago, I was able to provide this value as a student. And the, the blueprints were available for all of us to change. And it wouldn't, if it's just source code sitting somewhere, it's not as meaningful as it getting into, into people's hands. Um, and I was paid to learn. So I'm like 300 bucks one Saturday by walking around with free software. Um, so I'm going to back out of that piece because this, this was less about getting that website up and more of show you all the command line interface for what we've been doing. Now that we've created that pod and brought it up, I'm going to list a number of spaces. I've actually brought up quite a few spaces today. And um, I've, I've done some stuff with David and Aviro. And uh, they're at Oketo, Oketo and uh, WebRiot. And so we created PRs together and co-authored our, our commits, which, which was kind of fun. We really, really enjoyed that. Um, in addition to having all of these spaces that we created together, we can configure our SSH uh, to just use the plain SSH command to connect to these, whether they're in some Kubernetes pod. This pod could be inside of like kind, or it could be on a Windows box, or it could be on a Mac. It could be anything that we can deploy. The SSH config, I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see it over here. This um, is an SSH config file that has a bunch of entries for the different um, spaces that we created. And uh, if you're, what, what that allows is things like this. So I can SSH into this brand new, I'm going to move this back over so we can see it better. This allows us to SSH directly into any infrastructure that we're able to provision. And now we're inside of this new, this new space. And if you'll notice, we have sharing.io checked out. And it's got that index HTML. And it's also got that demo.org, which will be interesting in a minute, because down here, I've got some headings that include generating the links necessary to connect directly to these provisioned spaces. And so I'm going to make it easy for everybody to click on those spaces so you can see that um, <clears throat> when I render that, it shows up as sharing IO demo.html. And this has the slides here. So if I go to that myself under sharing.io slash demo.html, we just created instructions, not only that you were able to see me walk through step by step here on stage, but I also created it, exported it as HTML. I also was able to export it as slides. The front page you saw as the slides were part of that storytelling. This is part of that literate programming I was, I was speaking about. Um, make this page bigger. So if you want to do this on your system, you can install Coder. Again, I like to call it space, because it's not about just the coders. Uh, and you can create an instance or log into ours and list a template and create them. Now you're saying, well, this is all great, Hippie. But I still don't see anything that, that really interests me yet. But wait, there's more. All right, these Emacs and Web and Coder are all around the Kube Day TLV, TLV that I just brought up that's behind the website. Um, you could go look at CodeServe if you want to use code. Oh, well, I brought that up. So this is VS Code running on the web inside of that website. And we, I'm not, I don't know how to use this real well, but it, uh, it does things. And I'm glad for that. And then if we go, go back, those are still just websites you're not familiar with. I want to show you something you probably haven't seen before. And that's where we've actually brought up a new type of pod template. And this template didn't bring up a pod in an existing Kubernetes cluster. It brought up on the fly real hardware. And I chose the data center based on the latency between this building 
and uh, what was available. So I didn't have any in, in Tel Aviv, so I chose, um, I think Paris was the closest one. So this first one is another instance um, of that Emacs interface, and we can see that that's running here. I'm going to uh, tear that one off for a moment. And this is actually, so one of the things that II does is we help the, the CNCF to uh, have programs like the Kubernetes conformance program. And that allows places like Google and Apple and Amazon and lots of other companies on the, the landscape to submit um, certification for Kubernetes, say, we actually sell Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. But um, writing those tests can sometimes, sometimes be hard. And getting the environment up can sometimes be hard. So um, we have, again, with, with our, our Emacs environment is, is one way. But to say, I, I, I don't use Emacs. Well, that's fine. Let's look at the sharing I.O. Uh, demo again. We might replace the front page with this, so that here's the instructions, right, for now. Um, down here, way at the bottom, we've got the, uh, the, the VNC. So inside the VNC, it's actually um, a full desktop environment with VS Code and everything else. And within this environment, um, for example, here's, here's landscape. And this is just running as a, as a browser in a, in a browser. But you could run any software here. Um, can someone go to cloud, what was it, the sharing.io slash demo.html? You can do it on your phone. It'd be kind of be fun if you did, actually. And then when you get to it on your phone, oh, somebody did. Thank you very much. Uh, could you rotate your phone a little bit? Because it's better, like, you know, it's landscape, right? <laughs> awesome. So I can actually go through here, and I'm scrolling. So we're on the same page, whoever, whoever that is. Uh, and I will, let's see, page down. How do you do? There, there let's choose one. So I'm going to just scroll down a little bit. Can you click on um, Etsy? Somebody click on Etsy. So we're able to be on the same page together and navigate. Uh, and so, but it's a little bit hard on the screen. So if anybody's got a computer, maybe we can back out a little bit there and tell me what you think the latency feels like. Because we do a lot of things where it's nice to type and look how nice it is. But imagine if your machine is in a data center that has a 10, like there's four 10 gig links directly into the machine, it's got a much better connection than you do. And if you spin up a space for multiple people to connect to and, and pair, then you have this space that is an entire Kubernetes cluster. Because these deployments are actually full Kubernetes on hardware with own TLS ingress and everything. So right now, I've just shown you nothing about the web interface of actually using this, just the artifacts therein, which was stuff you can get to via a Kubernetes ingress. But how do you actually use it? You could use that CLI, or probably most people are just going to go to space.sharing.io and look at the templates. There's where you get the iPod. I'll, I'll make one right now. And I'll create a workspace. And I'll call it Monday. And you'll note that, again, like with the CLI, there's a web UI. And it says, which container do you want to run? What code do you want to check out? And what storytelling file do you want to use? You just click on Create Workspace. And it'll come up pretty quick. I'm also going to go and create a metal one. Now, this one has a lot more questions. And I'm going to call this uh, Monday, or um, Kube Day, Kube Day Hardware, All right? And you can choose a data center where this is sitting. And you can also choose a machine size. And these can get up to really big, including doing ARM boxes. Do you know how many projects have ARM stuff that they can't test because they don't have access to ARM? Well, this will allow our projects to be able to use ARM hardware donated by Equinix. This is all donated by Equinix, uh, including an OS of choice and an image uh, and a project. I'd like to see more people contributing to etcd, please. Uh, it's like the XKCD article, where there's this one person kind of holding up. It's like four of them, but it's still it's not enough. Uh, so I'm going to create this workspace. And you'll notice between these two creations, this one's already up. And it's got the def the, this list of, of things that we provision. In this case, I don't know if you can see what the text says there, but it's a Kubernetes. Uh, pod. And within that Kubernetes pod, it shows you the logs of everything starting up, which it came up pretty quick. And this is where we have that, that TMUX session over here. And I'll start up that Emacs, Emacs as well. 
And again, they're just public websites. You can share these with your friend to say, please come and, and collaborate with me. And that allows to do co-authored commits. So I'm going to bring these two up side by side. This is for the Monday that we just deployed moments ago. And there's actually a list of other uh, windows, including um, Emacs down here. And some of that, this is our demo that we had earlier. So you can actually go through this. I'm going to change the color so you can change the theme. Notice it affects uh, the web for the Emacs web for here. Or this, now that this is um, up and running, I'm actually going to, this may sound kind of weird, but I'm going to start another um, TMUX session. Because TMUX has this fun thing where you can actually select what window you're looking at. And so for our demo, if I'm over here and I go through this, it'll actually run in that other web page. So again, you can do this demo super easily to help onboard people to your project uh, and get through to, to being a, a co-authored uh, commit. Um, I want to save enough time for some questions, but I want to go ahead and, and uh, show you the, all the workspaces we currently have and what they look like once they're done. So that uh, IIPOD metal that we brought up earlier, it's got two, I'm going to hide those startup logs for a moment so you can kind of see what all is, is there. The IIPod is an Equinix metal device. I'm going to make this kind of full screen because we're kind of going to explore this for a moment. This is an Equinix metal device, and there's um, keys to click on here to get your uh, a command to log in directly. And um, there's also the NoVNC link and the export kube config. So you can download a kube config to direct hardware that's not at a cloud provider. It's running directly with all TLS ingress um, because down here at the bottom, you can see that we have an Acme wildcard certificate for star and the domain. So you get a dedicated domain for your uh, environment or your, your shared space. Um, and then all of these links to these different components. So I'm going to show you with these up um, what, those, what those are. And I think those are the same ones we, we made earlier on the demo. So this page here is... Um, Again, running inside of that, that uh, inside of that the box itself versus inside of the pod. So you have these two places to to work from, including Docker. Like sometimes it's harder to get Docker and Kubernetes and Cryo and 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 this is literally anything you come up with, and it's all uh, inside of a GitHub repo. Inside of um, I'm trying to create a cloud native co-op for space templates. How do we create templates? And the two that we've looked at today are IIPod and Emacs, sorry, not Emacs Pod, it was um, IIPod Metal. So IIPod itself is a pod that gets deployed to a Kubernetes cluster that runs Coder. And the, the this one is a, um, a box that is a, you can see, let me make this large enough. This is Equinix Metal, some fairly decent box sizes here. Um, so I would invite you to explore with me, like try this out, and join the, there's a, a channel on the CNCF uh, Slack, because we're trying to go from single player mode to co-op mode. And here, um, over here in the, uh, the co-op mode channel is kind of where we aggregate around that, and um, our space templates for creating space is where we are working uh, together on that. So, is there anybody has any questions? Does anybody want to try that out? Um, crickets. <laughs> Say that again. Not all at once. Exactly. Uh, it's it's a pretty deep. Like I I I wasn't sure which audience I would have today. Um, but it's definitely one of those things that's more of an interactive experience to actually go through and try this. Um, again, it's, it's, it's free for the moment, uh, and it's, it's something like I work with the CNCF, so this is a pro thing we're focusing on trying to provide to the projects. But the templates and the ability to demonstrate whatever your business is to bring up an, uh, an instance of your software that's custom for the person you're trying to sell to or the company you're trying to show, here's a working website that is customized to show you the value that we want to give you in exchange for money, uh, which is not too much different from, we would like you to spend time working on our project. Here's a super easy way to let us know you're interested and experience how to use it and experience how to contribute 
to our, our projects here within the CNCF ecosystem. We got you know, the 100, you know, the 200 projects for terribly long. And how do we make sure that all of our projects have the space to make it easy for people to, to contribute? So we got five minutes left. If there are no questions, I can let you all go home early. Cool. That's me.